Despite A Christmas Story becoming one of the most iconic comedies of all time, it was not the first film to bring Gene Shepard's Parker family to life, as two TV movies had been made previously, one in 1976 and another in 1982, which actually starred a young Matt Dillon as Ralphie, and it sadly wouldn't be the last in the franchise either. Oh, fudge. Realizing its growing popularity in the 90s, MGM scrambled to put together a follow-up, which reunited director Bob Clark and Gene Shepard in 1994 for My Summer Story. Despite this, it's a good movie that makes a fun epilogue to its predecessor. They tried the same thing in 2012, although it was a much more shameless attempt. Son of a bitch. And in just a few days, HBO Max will release yet another follow-up, though this one looks to be a proper sequel. It's ironic to see so many attempts to sequelize a film that initially wasn't very successful, though. But amongst all of these attempts to cash in on the success of that 1983 film, there was one made just five years after A Christmas Story that refreshingly doesn't try to mimic it, instead becoming its own thing. It must be my imagination. It's the way I see him now. He probably was just an ordinary looking guy. What can I do for you, gentlemen? You see, following the initial box office failure of A Christmas Story, and prior to it becoming a cult hit, no studio really saw a franchise potential in these characters, and Gene Shepard was free to take his Parker family back to TV. And so, a few years later, he developed a new script. Based originally on a short story he wrote for Playboy in 1968, the film would follow a teenage Ralphie and the Parker family on their annual summer pilgrimage to a Lake Michigan campground called Ollie Hop Noodles Haven of Bliss. And unlike the other PBS films, Disney, yes, Disney, agreed to fund the project and air it on the Disney Channel in summer 1988. Oh, Ralph, there's that nice Wanda Hickey. Wave goodbye to her. Come on, Mom. Do it. It re-aired on PBS shortly after, and then Disney released it on VHS in 1993. And then it just completely vanished. I'm amazed that despite the resurgence in popularity the characters have experienced due to A Christmas Story, that Disney has never released this movie beyond its original 1993 VHS. Which is even more disappointing considering the movie is actually a lot of fun. It effortlessly captures the spirit that made A Christmas Story the cult hit that it is, without trying too hard to directly copy it. But with yet another sequel on the way, I figured it'd be a good time to revisit this forgotten Parker family adventure. So let's dust off the VCR and check out Ollie Hop Noodles' Haven of Bliss. I, like most 90s kids, grew up watching A Christmas Story every holiday season, after it was introduced to me by my father. But as much as we enjoyed the movie, my dad always seemed to recall a sequel that he saw on TV years prior. The only thing he really remembered was a scene in which the Parkers are driving behind a chicken truck. Naturally, every video store thought we were insane when we inquired about such a film. I was confident that my dad had dreamed the whole thing up, until my mom, using a popular new website called IMDb, finally tracked down the title of this fabled movie, Ollie Hop Noodles Haven of Bliss, though the video stores were somehow even more confused now that we had a title to give them. It turns out the movie had been out of print, since its original release. We eventually tracked down a VHS copy at a public library of all places. Maybe it was because it took such an effort to view this movie back then, but watching it for the first time, I kind of fell in love with it. In an era when A Christmas Story was gaining popularity, it was kind of nice to have this forgotten little TV sequel all to myself. I'll never forget starting up our VCR for the first time, and watching those first few frames appear on the screen, as they are truly unlike anything that I remotely expected. Life in the mill town is getting out of school as quickly as possible and getting a job. Joining all the other suckers on life's treadmill. Hi -ho, hi -ho. Yes, those are video clips taken from Metropolis with Disney's Hi Ho playing over them. Even looking back now, it's an incredibly bold way to start a movie, and I have to give props to Gene Shepard for how different he wanted this movie to feel right from the start. The film, like Shepard's earlier works, uses a specific time period as a backdrop, though it tells several stories in the lives of the main characters. For instance, Ralphie gets his first job at a used furniture warehouse, Mrs. Parker launches a crusade to find the missing family dog, Fuzzhead, and Mr. Parker plans the perfect family vacation. Fifty weeks of drudgery, and the old man was ready to break the chains. Every year, he swore that he'd get out on the road before dawn to miss the traffic. Every year, he lost the battle. Oh, you turn off that crummy light. 
With the exception of Gene Shepard as the narrator, the Parker family are played by new actors here. The old man is played by James Sicking, and he channels everything we loved about Darren McGavin's performance while still taking some new chances in the part. I'm smoking old butts from the ashtray. Coffee! first golden moments of the old man's vacation had begun. I especially like that we get to see the old man with his drinking buddies this time around. Ollie says they're really biting this year. They're jumping right out of the lake into the boat. Just once. Just once before I die, I'd like to go fishing on my vacation. Dorothy Lyman plays Mrs. Parker, and she's also just great as the overbearing yet devoted mother. Have you got the bath mat? The what? The bath mat. A bath mat? What do you want a bath mat for? Never know, it might be nice. Never mind, I'll get it. Randy's actor, Jason Clark Adams, does more or less what you'd expect the character to do. Mostly whine and sniffle. Can I bring my raccoon? Oh, crying out loud, that thing is three feet tall. We're overloaded as it is. Mm. Yes, Randy, you may bring him. The highlight, however, is probably Jerry O'Connell playing Ralphie. He captures the childlike innocence of Peter Billingsley's performance, but also makes the character feel more mature and eager to grow up, unlike the teenage Ralphie in A Christmas Story 2, for instance. We're crying out loud! Ralphie has graduated from his days of desiring a BB gun and gifts for Christmas, and is now obsessed with fishing. There's nothing in the world of literature that can send the blood racing quicker than a fishing tackle catalog. I have seen grown men weep over pictures of fly rods and salmon streamers in full color. His friends, Flick and Schwartz, are also back. Though, oddly enough, the actor playing Flick looks like Schwartz from A Christmas Story, and the actor playing Schwartz looks like Flick from the same movie. Abalone. And then there's also Gene Shepard appearing on screen this time as Mr. Scott, Ralphie's first boss. Oh, and by the way, uh, we're gonna deduct two dollars a piece for them work gloves, and don't forget to turn them in when you leave. Described in the film as a combination of Rasputin and the Wolfman. Shepard appeared very briefly in A Christmas Story, so it's great to see him get a bigger role this time around. You gentlemen ready to work? You bet, sure. Yes, sir. You're ready to throw your shoulders against that wheel? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yeah. We'll find out. But of course, he really shines as the movie's narrator. The seedy, oh, greasy spoon down the street from the high school. The food was terrible. John was as mean as a bear with a bad molar. But all the kids hung out there. No one knew why. I know he's the writer of the material, but man, can this guy paint an incredibly vivid picture with just his voice. You can hear the nostalgia and love of his childhood in every single breath that he takes, even in talking about something as mundane as meatloaf. Can't you just smell that meatloaf? Yeah, she set the standard for the whole state. She was to meatloaf what Ted Williams was to long ball hitting. Mom was a slugger. Now, the movie does drag a bit leading up to the start of their vacation. The missing fuzzhead scenes really feel like filler that don't really have a payoff. Fuzzhead! Oh, sweet honey, <laughs> fuzzhead! No, fuzzhead. no, 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 this is fufu, my sherry, fufu. Ralphie and his friends getting their first job offer some great moments, though. That night, I hurt all over. It was like every inch of me had been pounded by small sledgehammers driven by imps. Shepard really nailed the eagerness of wanting your first job as a teenager, only then to realize that jobs are actually pretty hard. If this was work, forget it, forget it. It's a tough life lesson that we all have to learn, and Shepard handles it with humor and dignity. Heine, I'm sending three more down. There's also a couple of bizarre dream sequences like the ones that appear in A Christmas Story. But the best part of the movie comes when the Parker family finally hits the road and heads to Ollie Hop Noodles. I gotta go! I knew it! I knew it! Well, you're just gonna have to hold it! Gene Shepard really excelled at taking these everyday family situations and mining the humor out of them. Holy cow! Who stuck the chocolate bar in the glove compartment? What dumb sucker put them? It's got nuts in it. Anyone who's ever taken a family road trip can relate to this movie the constantly complaining younger brother, the frequent pit stops. 
Every 30 miles or so, he unleashed another barrage. And you know, considering that he rarely ate anything, we always wondered where it all came from. He had an endless supply. Playing all those road trip games and mom's need to stop at every roadside stand are all things so many of us can relate to. We don't have time to stop for any dumb hook rugs. We're trying to make it to Ollie's before dark. There's also, of course, car trouble. It's steaming. No. What makes you think that? Well, I can see it, honey. Look, there it is. And a flat tire, a scene which contains the only direct reference to a Christmas story, though it's so worth it. Can I help? Are you kidding? As with the other Parker family adventures, the comedy comes from the frustrations these characters encounter in the world around them, but also with each other. Will you cut it out, you two? I got enough problems with that Chevy over there. I don't want to hear you two yapping all afternoon. It's this honest depiction of family life that has made these characters so iconic. I love that the old man seems to have contempt for his family, though you know there's love underneath it. It almost makes you question if this hellish road trip to Ollie Hop Noodles was worth it. <laughs> But then they get there, and you can see that it is. To me, the relationship between Ralph and his father is the heart of all of these movies. And Shepard really elevates their dynamic here, with the old man coming to grips with the fact that Ralphie isn't a kid anymore. When I was 14, I had two jobs I've been working for 10 years. All fathers since the beginning of time have believed that kids have it easier than they did when they were a kid. Now, while I'll always have a fondness for my summer story, it just yet again falls into the trap of trying too hard to capture what made its predecessor a hit. And that's exactly why I love this movie. Mm. I don't know how you can do that. Mm. Oh, I tell you, I've been drinking pickle juice since I was a kid. It came out only five years after A Christmas Story, but a few years before it was recognized as a cult hit. Therefore, it didn't have to try so hard to replicate the style of that movie. Rather, it was just able to tell its own story and take the characters in a new direction. Parts of it do drag, and being a TV movie, it doesn't look nearly as polished as a Christmas story. But Ollie Hopnell's Haven of Bliss is charming in its own right. He stayed there mile after mile, spraying us with everything the chickens can do. It's simply baffling that it has yet to be released on physical media or streaming and rediscovered by fans of the other movies. The VHS transfer is available on YouTube in full, and I recommend checking it out if you've never seen it, especially if you've grown tired of the mass exploitation of A Christmas Story, but are still fond of the characters. There's a road. 